Chapter Four of Autumn Leaves. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Autumn Leaves, edited by Anna Wales Abbott. Lines written at the close of Dr. Holmes's lectures on English poetry. Footnote: The poets are metaphorically introduced as follows: Rogers, the beech; Campbell, the fir. Byron, the oak, Moore, the elm, Scott, the chestnut, Southey, the holly, Coleridge, the magnolia, Keats, the orange, Wordsworth, the pine, Tennyson, the palm, Felicia Hemans, the locust, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, the laurel. End footnote. Farewell, farewell, the hours we've stolen from scenes of worldly strife and stir to live with poets and with thee, their brother and interpreter, have brought us wealth. As thou hast reaped, we have not followed thee in vain, but gathered in one precious sheaf the pearly flower and golden grain. For twelve bright hours with thee we walked within a magic garden's bound, where trees whose birth owned various climes beneath one sky were strangely found. First in the group, an ancient beech, his shapely arms abroad did fling, wearing old autumn's russet crown among the lively tints of spring. Those pale brown leaves and winds of March made vocal mid the silent trees, and spread their faint perfume abroad like sad yet pleasant memories. Near it, the vigorous noble fir arose with firm yet graceful mien, Welcome for shelter or for shade, a pyramid of living green. And from the tender, vernal spray, the sunny air such fragrance drew, as breathes from fields of strawberries wild, all bathed in morning's freshest dew. The oak, his branches richly green, broad to the winds did wildly fling. The first in beauty and in power, all bowed before the forest king but ere its brilliant leaves were sere or scattered by the autumn wind, fierce lightnings struck its glories down and left a blasted trunk behind. A youthful elm, its drooping boughs, in graceful beauty bent to earth, as if to touch with reverent love the kindly soil that gave it birth, and round it, in such close embrace, sweet honeysuckles did entwine, we knew not if the south wind caught its odorous breath from tree or vine. The chestnut tall, with shining leaves, and yellow tassels covered o'er, the sunny summer's golden pride, and pledge of autumn's ruddy store, though grander forms might near it rise, and sweeter blossoms scent the air, was still a favorite amongst the trees that flourished in that garden fair all brightly clad in glossy green and scarlet berries gay to see we welcome next a constant friend the brilliant cheerful holly tree but twilight falls upon the scene rich odors fill the evening air and lighting up the dusky shades gleam the magnolia's blossoms fair the firefly with its fairy lamp flashes within its soft green bower the humming sphinx flits in and out to sip the nectar of its flower. Now the charmed air, more richly fraught, to steep our senses in delight, comes o'er us as the orange tree in beauty beams upon our sight, and, glancing through its emerald leaves, white buds and golden fruits are seen, fit flowers to deck the bride's pale brow, fit fruit to offer to a queen. But let me rest beneath the pine, and listen to the low sad tone its music breathes, that o'er my soul comes like the ocean's solemn moan. Erect it stands in graceful strength, its spire points upward to the sky, and nestled in its sheltering arms the birds of heaven securely lie. And though no gaily painted bells, no odor-bearing urns are there, when the west wind sighs through its boughs, let me inhale the balmy air. The stately palm in conscious pride lifts its tall column to the sky, while round it fragrant air plants cling, deep stained with every gorgeous dye. Linger with me a moment where the locust trembles in the breeze, 
in soft, transparent verdure dressed, contrasting with the darker trees. The humming bird flies in among its boughs, with pure white clusters hung, and honey bees come murmuring where its perfume on the air is flung. A noble laurel meets our gaze, ere yet we leave these alleys green, mongst many stately, fair, and sweet, the Daphne Odora stands a queen. May 2, 1853 End of Lines Written at the Close of Dr. Holmes's Lectures on English Poetry